In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize Google Search Engine time series uh, images. In the last video, I already show you how to create time series uh, a cloud free image composite uh, using Google Search Engine. So, and in that video, I show you how to actually add the layers one by one uh, using a loop to the map. But uh, in this video, I'm going, I'm going to show you a better way so that you can use a time slider. Uh, you only have one layer, but you can change the layer using the time slider without having to add uh, many, many layers uh, to the map. So first, let's go to the uh, web page to download the novel example. So go to tutorials.gmap.org and then click uh, image collection, uh, visualizing time series. Then click the icon uh, upper right corner to download the image, uh, the notebook to your computer. So once you download the notebook to your computer, uh, you can then open Anaconda prompt. Then just conda activate uh, GE. This is the environment that we created in the previous videos. And then just type Jupyter Notebook. Hit enter. It should open Jupyter Notebook on your browser. Then you can navigate to documents uh, GE. Okay, so open the uh, visualizing time series. So in this uh, notebook example, we have uh, three sections. I'm going to show you how to visualize weather data, vegetation data, and also uh, Landsat satellite imagery. So first of all, you need to import the libraries. And this one is very important. After you import the library, uh, control slash to execute this one, uh, to update the package on your computer. So, and then just hit uh, control enter. Because some of the functions that I'm using in this video uh, is new to, um, that I just added uh, last um, yesterday. So if you go to the GMAP uh, repo, and so the add time slider function I just added a couple of hours ago. That's very important that you need to install the package from uh, GitHub so that you can use the latest uh, function. After that, uh, you can see the comments in here. Um, you need to basically comment out this one so that it doesn't run this one uh, again. And then you can restart the Jupyter kernel. Uh, to take effect so i'm going to restart and uh, clear output once you restart it then you can import this one one more time so uh, install the package is only one time only you don't have to repeat the install so now we have the latest version of the package uh, we can then continue to just execute the source code and so the first section here uh, we are utilizing the google's engine uh, the NOAA uh, temperature data so this is the one here, if you see from the image collection ID and also the date. This is an hourly data. So every hour you have one image and we are just using one day, uh, 2018 uh, December 22nd to December 23rd. So just within one day and then we select temperature about two meters above uh, ground. If you want to see more information about this data set, uh, you can certainly maybe just uh, copy this one and then come to here, data, uh, paste, hit enter you should be able to find the data set in here so from the list right and then you can uh, click the hyperlink to navigate to the google earth engine data set uh, web page then you can look at for example the description in here also the the band so we are using just the first band uh temperature uh, two meter above ground in degrees celsius and this is what it shows uh, here on the map right so if you see this is just one the first image we we get the image collection and then we this is how we want to visualize we get the first image and then display it on the map but as you can see from this image collection here it has 24 images right how about if you want to see all the images uh, you probably don't want to add 24 layers actually to the map so if you click here upper right corner and then click this one uh, this is just the first image if you add all of them yeah you're going to end up with 24 layers so it might be too much so this is why i developed the time slider so you can just uh, visualize the images much uh, easier okay so before we get into the time slider i also want to show you how you can actually uh extract some of the very the time series uh, pixel values so how can we do that um one thing that you need to do is actually to convert the image collection to one image okay and then we can use the uh, protein tool to actually to uh, see the uh, temporal chain so very simple just collection dot two bands they uh, originally the image collection uh, is 24 images if you convert it to uh, spectral bands then you become one image with 24 bands okay so essentially the information is still the same but it's like two different format one is like 
you can think about like within one folder you have 24 images and the other one is you have you just have one image but you have 24 bands okay so the information contained within those images are still the same but uh in order to do uh plotting we actually need the uh um uh image to be converted to uh image okay so once you add this one in mind here i uh, set the layer to false okay because we don't need to actually to see the map we just want to see the uh do the plotting so if you want you can turn this one on uh you won't be able to see much because right now we're using uh, uh, the entire 24 bands but you only see the uh the the, the, the uh, three first bands i'm then going to turn this one off and once you have the data layer on the map you can use the uh, either the inspector so if you use the inspector if you click on the map right now because that one is hiding so uh it won't show but uh you you can certainly turn this one on if you want okay and then if you click on the map you should be able to see all the 24 um the band the pixel values for all the uh, uh, uh bands but this is not very helpful because the uh the name of the band is very long so um it'll be easier to maybe just use the plotting so let me turn this one one more time off and so then we can use the plotting tool so once you click this one make sure that you select the time series because the first image you only have one pixel it's only going just to get one pixel value but if you select the time series and then you click on the map you should be able to see this one so 24 hours right the temperature you can see the temperature uh decrease and then increase also it we might be different uh, in the ocean so in the ocean it's more like um you can see the train here uh day and, and 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 night you can move the, the the map around you can click on the map to see um more locations keep in mind here uh this one right now is crowded um by default uh it's going to get all the the layer name uh the the name of each band so you can customize uh, if you want but uh, i'm not going to show you here in this video uh, just to make it simple so one easy way that you can do this is just to simply click on the map and then make sure you select this uh, time series and then you can see the uh, changes uh, each one okay so next i'm going to show you here how to use the time slider uh, let me close this one uh, inspector so the time slider before uh, if we want to use we can directly just uh, add the function map dot add time slider and then within the time slider you pass in the image collection so in here uh we also have the you, you can pass in the visualization parameters so this is the same one that we used earlier to visualize this map the other um, um parameter is the label so the label is when you have the time slider you want to show let me maybe just execute this one first so the label actually is because we have 24 images right so when the user is uh, using the slider you want to show actually more information you can show the, the date or the time of that image right so in this case we just construct a list of a uh, 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 time so from uh, uh, midnight and then all the way to uh, 23 uh, p.m so if you see here we're going to display this one when the user using the slider so let me just quickly go in here and yeah, you will know what i'm saying right so the first one here let me go back to turn off the uh, first image so right now we have a time series so this time series has actually has 24 images right now it's just one layer so you can move around right so this is the label right the first one and then you can for example move that to the second one third one uh you can move along if you want right so you will see that uh, the temperature actually changes uh over time so this is because the temperature so uh, depends on the date and depends on the uh the sun so you have incoming um solar radiation so it's going to increase the temperature uh from for example uh, at night and this probably day and night and you see here during the day it's much much higher temperature you can also simply use the uh the play icon so this one is going to loop through uh all the images and just to show you you can also pause the animation if you want okay so this is how easy it is to for you to actually visualize the data and this is very uh effective because if you have if you want to visualize the changes you can just uh, use the slider to uh, to slide through uh, the time series and you can just click uh, if you want to pause this one you can pause you can click the play button again to continue to play and you're going to go back to the first one and just to keep uh, continue and you can just stop if you don't need this one you can just click this uh, close time slider uh, it's going to close out
and so again we're seeing here right so this is a nice way that you can uh, visualize the uh, images you don't necessarily have to pass in a label uh, if you don't pass in you know, by default it's going to one two three so let me show you here again and uh, shift enter all right so by default depends on how many images you have uh, the number is going to start from one all the way to the number of images right so we have 24 uh, the last one will be 24 right? we can slice through okay so this is the first example for visualizing uh, temperature data the next one i'm going to show you is uh, visualizing vegetation data for example ndvi and similarly uh, just keep in mind here the same procedures right we create a map and then we get the image collection so this image collection come from uh, modis right ndvi and we're going to filter by uh, date so this one is 2018 uh, april 1st to uh, may 1st and so essentially we have one month of data and then we just select the uh ND, ndvi band uh, it probably uh, has more bands so if you want you can copy this one and let me execute first and then we can if you want to see more information just click data and maybe you can paste this one see if you can find it okay so it's here this is six or uh 16 day uh 16 day uh, um, uh data and so if you go to uh click the link you can look at more information about the data set uh, if you want okay so once we have the data then we can actually visualize how how you want to visualize the data um so minimum maximum and, and then you can also have the uh the color palette then we get the first image then we display the first image so this is what it looks like uh, in here similarly we can convert the collection to just one image and then we can add um, the uh, time series to the map okay so you can then go back to here we can turn this one on uh, again this is just um the convert to image and then show you the first uh, three bands so you might not really see much but you can click the uh, plotting tool and then select the time series click on the map you should be able to actually see the um the uh, uh, the, the, the ndvi so basically the vegetation changes uh within that uh, month so i can maybe okay turn on this one turn off this one so it, it's much better for you to see how the uh, ndvi is changing over time so we can click right uh, different location you will probably get different value if you click on the ocean uh it's no data so if you click on vegetation you will see this is pretty high right 0.5 if you click some uh, here in the mid waste uh, if you click for example cloud you're going to have um, very low data or sometimes no data right and so this is a way for you to actually look at the time series uh, the changes of uh, uh, vegetation uh, over time once you have the time series uh, we might want to visualize the each individual image so let's close the uh, protein tool and then what we need just to execute so here for the labels there's actually a let me maybe add another cell uh just hit a on your uh, keyboard and then you should add a new cell above i can just simply control x copy this one and then i can show you what the label looks like so the label here is like each date okay so uh, april 1st all the way to april uh, 30 and we have 30 days and this is the label when it's show it uh, on the time slider and then we can just execute the time slider so you see the label here each label uh, if, like i said earlier if you don't set the labels uh, by default it's going to from one to the size of the collection so a 30 so it'll be one to 30 and you can zoom in to take a little, little bit more detail about uh, the changes and you can simply just slice through because this is within uh, one month you might not see too much of a difference might be hard to tell but you can still see some minor changes like uh, for example in here it gets a bit uh, greener uh, over time right you can also just use the time slide just play through right, to see the changes keep in mind because each time um it's changing it's actually retrieving the data layer from google's engine so sometimes it might be a bit slow you might need to wait so uh you will see the cursor actually is waiting uh depends on how complicated your uh, image collection is if the collection is directly from the earth engine data catalog it should be pretty quick but if the image collection is from your uh, computation, sometimes it might take a while. So you might want to set, for example, the time slider to be a bit slower. If you want, you can uh, pause this one and then go to the time slider here. You can just place your 
cursor within the parentheses and then hit uh, shift tab on your keyboard you can look at the uh, information so in here there's one parameter called time interval so time interval is when uh, it's playing, playing the, um, uh, the time series how uh, was the time interval you want to be so one means one second so if you want it to be slower you can change to two seconds or if you want to be faster you can be 0.5 seconds so for example i can just copy this one and then just come back to here time slide oh it's already here so i can change it maybe to uh two seconds Oop. two seconds uh let me close this one first and so i can add another one so i'm going to add maybe uh two seconds it will certainly be a bit slower so if you right now come back to here if you play it's going to wait for two seconds before it moves right you can certainly also move to uh maybe point point two uh you'll be a lot faster so once you hit point two let's come back if you see the slider it's moving a lot faster right and you might sometimes might be able to see the changes uh, if you want to be more quick again like i said uh it depends on the data set uh it takes time to retrieve the data set and display on the map so uh you make sure you don't want to like make it too fast otherwise the data has not been loaded yet but uh, you're already moving to the next one so this is how you can visualize uh, uh ndvi data and the last one here i'm going to show you is how to visualize uh, lens set data so these the first two examples are all image collections so essentially you have a, a folder and within the folder you have a bunch of images but you can also actually use to visualize just one image right so each image if you have more uh, multi-spectral bands you can also visualize that so this is how we're going to use here uh, lens set data so the lens set data uh, this is a, a image global composite uh, from 1999 um, to 2003 and we're going to select these uh, six uh, spectral bands and this is how we're going to visualize and all we need just add time slider and the edit image how we want to visualize and also the label and also the time interval right just hit one you should be able to see for example from the first one here the label b1 right bang one uh, you can move the slider around to b2 b3 right and b4 so when you get higher so some of the values might get much much higher but if, if you want you can also use the uh, inspector so i'm going to get the inspector and then you can click on the map uh, right now because it it's it's layer is only one band uh, if you add the entire image you can also do that so let me show you in here i can just map so add layer and then uh what else layer do image hmm. image and then visualization uh, parameters and the layer will be just the let me just put lens set okay and then shift enter so we already add the slider but we don't need the slider if you want, want to look at for example the spectral signature of the map you can click this one and then if you click on the map you should be able to see the spectral signature like this right so if you can click any location uh you want and so this one is just using the first uh, by default uh it's just using the just uh the first uh, three bands but if you want a time slider then you just execute again uh, we can come back to here and of the uh, lane set and this is just the time series right then you can just use the time slider to let it play uh, uh, loop through the uh, the, the six uh, spectral bands and pause if you want okay so you can apply this to any image collection uh, it doesn't matter how many images you you have it can be 10 it can be 100 it can be even 1000 so you can use the slider to slice loop so and if you uh, if your uh, time series has a lot of uh, changes you will be able to see those changes directly using the time slider so this is a quick way for you to visualize a uh, time series uh, images you can always hit uh, shift tab on your keyboard to bring up to see what parameter you can provide right you can if you don't provide for the default uh, parameters it's going to be use the default one time interval you can also for example change the uh the position so by default it's like a bottom right in here but you can actually up have to uh, bottom uh, uh top right top left and uh, uh, 
yeah top top left and then bottom left you can also bottom left so for example right now if i want the uh, this one to be up here you can do that as well let me close this one and just come to here just type position equal to i can say uh top right okay shift enter uh, you will see this one here right now top right corner right you can also change the length so if you have too many images uh, you can make the um the slider a bit longer again uh shift tap if you want to see the information right so uh you'll be the slide the length by default is uh, 150 uh, pixels let me copy this one and then just paste if you want it to be longer you can make it longer so i can maybe say uh 300 pixels oh, shift enter now it's much uh, much longer so it's up to you it depends on how you want to uh use that if you have more images you can make it longer if you have the less images you can make it smaller so maybe uh, for this case in here uh, 100 should be uh, sufficient just use 100 that's fine as well but usually you want to put this one here um uh, because this one it comes kind of uh, kind of blocked by the, uh, the toolbar so it's better to just put uh the bottom right it will be better usually and change it back to bottom right shift enter Right, and then you can just navigate through okay so uh you can test this with any uh, image collection you want uh, any data set within the image collection uh you should be able to visualize this way so you can pass in one image collection or you can pass in one image so if this is one image it's going to loop through all the bands if it is image collection it's going to loop through all the images so you can try it out um and hopefully you can you will find this one uh, useful Okay, so uh, that's all for this uh, video and uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.